This is The Scale Up Show, bringing you the latest on income, marketing, and entrepreneurship. What's it all about today? Design over function, right? Yeah, I think it's like uh, yeah. the first thing, of course, you you, you got to get when you obviously start an e-commerce store is an online store. If you don't have an online store, uh, it's obviously going to be hard to sell something. Mm-hmm. So that's probably the first step someone uh, is going to get into. I mean, I think the first thing we can probably agree, all, all three of us on trade from the bat, uh, go for Shopify. Yeah, 100%. I think it's uh, no argument needed. There's nothing else out there that can compete with it. No. Yes, yes, if you think that you uh, want to run an e-commerce business and it cannot run on Shopify, don't run an e-com business. Yeah, no, exactly. exactly. Then, so, then, then, then it's too complex. Yeah. And I mean, that's like uh, one of the biggest decisions I think already taken away. So you, you kind of know what you need. And to be honest, I mean, getting that Shopify account of the same, I mean, you can start with basic, I think it's like, what is it, 29 bucks a month or something. Yeah. You, you can grow with it, but it's like legit all you need. You got a whole team of developers ready there for you, who are of course back by Shopify, they can help you. And that's one of the biggest decisions taken away already. Like you have the right platform. Yeah. Like yes. you said, there's nothing better than Shopify, I think at the moment. I think it, it, it says enough that a lot of agencies now only work with Shopify, no longer work with Wix, with WordPress or anything like that. Everything from the user interface to, like you said, you know, downloading the apps, the developers on the back end, the conversion rates, which we'll be getting into in just a moment, everything is just on point with Shopify. Yeah, yeah I, I got a question today from some entrepreneur asking me on YouTube, it was uh, it was a comment on a video. He said, okay, it's, uh, in this, uh, this question was, okay, Shopify is t- too expensive for me, so what should I do? Do it in WordPress? Um, the the funny thing is, the funny thing is, if you do it in WordPress, the software is maybe free, but the time you need to install an e-com business and, uh, and, 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 ho- and, and pay for some hosting, maybe you can get hosting for 10 bucks, 15 bucks, cheap mm-hmm, hosting, yeah. but it takes you at least you're a super fast guy if you can build a complete WooCommerce shop in one day. That's then, then you are super fast. But you can build a uh, Shopify shop in in an hour. Yeah, the if basics less. The b- yeah, the yeah. or less. And if you pay forty US bucks for this, they raise they raise their prices uh, next month. So it will be a little inflation. bit more more uh, expensive. But hey, man, inflation hits all of us. Yeah, man. but <laughs> if you if you want to start an e-com business, uh, yes. Um, Start with if you start with maybe one thousand US bucks, you can create uh, build a great Shopify store. One hundred percent. You can buy a great team from a great developer, and you can start. You can uh, go to nine nine designs, um, design some logos, whatever. But what, 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 uh, if you are willing to invest one thousand US dollars, you have an amazing store. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think if you're not willing to pay twenty nine dollars a month, then how likely are you to succeed as an entrepreneur? How likely is that business exactly. idea that you have? gonna succeed. Yeah, you can go the cheap route and try the WordPress, uh, you know, but if you invest in it from the start, like I said in the previous podcast, you know, once you have that skin in the game, you're more likely to continue yeah, yeah. with it. Yes, and it's important, uh, what I always say to my customers is uh, look at the total cost of ownership, and that's something different than the first investment, but total cost of ownership main means um, what does it cost um, to maintain your WordPress site or yeah. to ma- maintain your Magento site? It, it, that's not free. And if you need to hire a programmer, uh, a good programmer in Europe and also in the US, will ask maybe 80, maybe 100 US dollars an hour. And one hour is nothing if they just look at your shop first. So they at least need, maybe need 10 hours, maybe 20 hours to fix your problem. Um, for that same money, you already have a year of Shopify. So. Yeah, no, and of course, there's also <laughs> migration costs involved. Like, let's say you do start with that Magento, you do start with that WordPress. I quite often see that, like, two, three, four years down in the business, eventually you do make the decision to go switch to Shopify because you just yeah. see, like, kind of the conclusion we're making on this call. You do start to make it for yourself as well, and then it becomes an even bigger hurdle because then you have that whole mm-hmm. database. Everything, to, yeah. everything needs to move over. So. It's kind of like if you have the choice right now, you could start from the beginning. I would 100% advise Shopify. Yeah, there's a reason why all the big guys are using it as well. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like if you look at the biggest websites, the biggest e-commerce websites, 99% of them will be on Shopify. Yeah, and yeah. easy to scale. If you want, if if it's if it's a success, you can scale easily. You have a lot of apps integration, so it's super easy to. To, to, to make it bigger. If you start with, uh, for example, one order a week, but if you grow to 100 orders a day, that's no issue for Shopify. You even don't pay more. It's the same price. Yeah, exactly. They yeah, do the hosting the, for you. And, ho- and good hosting and security, don't forget the security is, is expensive and they do it for you. So that's that's great. Yeah. 
Really and, and if you go to the design part, because if you now go to Shopify and maybe you can use one of our links, and maybe you can go for yeah, we can always or something. Exactly. Maybe, maybe we can do an 100%. affiliate link. Uh, we will think we'll about uh, that, and you find it somewhere below the video. Well, we can definitely we can put down below, um, of course, like where you can find Shopify, and we'll also put like two teams that we would recommend. Yeah, just two teams we've seen like time and time again work in all kinds of niches. Now, obviously. Um, is a team going to be a way to your success? Absolutely not. Yeah, it's just a team. It's just how it looks. It's just like based on what we see combining certain items with it does really well. So if you would use this as like your your core, like your basis to build out, it's a great solid foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And the, the funny thing with, with the team is that um, of course you have your own <coughs> brand identity and maybe you spend some money on branding, but the fun part is that we what we mostly see and I tested a few times myself is that the just the default team from Shopify. You get it for free with Shopify. It's mostly the highest converting team there is. It's, yeah, it's, cheap, it's free. It's good. And it's pretty, pretty good. So of course you can spend 10,000 US dollars on a team. You can also spend 100 US dollars on a team. But um, the free teams are sometimes, uh, especially if they're built by Shopify, so you, then, then you know the code is really well. So you have yeah. no worries about hacks or whatever. If it's built by Shopify and it's free, if it's not built by Shopify and it's free, I always say, okay, be precaution. You never know what's maybe in it. But if it's just built by Shopify, start from there, upload your logo and just start. Yeah, 100%. And don't overthink this, that process because it's some, that, that team is, is, <coughs> is so, so well developed and it works so well on mobile, on tablet, desktop, whatever, that it's a great start. Yeah. Yeah. I in think it's like also just what you say, like to jump in quickly on, make sure you design mobile first. Like I, I don't know how many times I need to say this, but like it's nice that your website looks great on desktop, but you're just not getting any traffic on desktop anymore. It's yeah. like a mobile yeah. game nowadays. That should be your first focal point. Yeah. That should be definitely everything. Yeah. Like every design decision you make should be mobile first, and then afterwards only look how it looks on desktop. Yeah. Yes, in the end, when if you hire a developer or whatever for building your shop, and they will mostly 99% of the time they always show you the desktop version because of course the, your developers building the, your team on a desktop computer, you cannot build it on a phone. So they always first show you the desktop version, but always ask how will mobile works. That's, and, and also test it. And if you have a team, test it with your team to, to your, 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 your mobile yeah. site. It's so important to have that, uh, it's fast and it works. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, logic, yeah. Yeah, from an agency perspective as well, like when we get the question, um, so when we analyze specific drop-offs, so let's say the product page is at a certain conversion rate and the people drop off on that product page. So there's no no one adding to cart or a very small amount of people adding to cart. Then my standard operating procedure at that point is to go into the ads manager. If they're running Facebook ads, go into the Facebook ads manager, look at the breakdown, look at the amount of traffic that is coming from mobile versus desktop. I already know right off the bat that it's gonna be mobile first. So all the traffic, the large majority of traffic will be from mobile. Then I'll look at the web page or the product page on mobile and then figure out, you know, why is it that people are dropping off? Nine times out of 10 is because they've optimized their whole store for desktop. Like Cornet said, they, they've, because the web developer is on the laptop, they will develop, you know, the store on the laptop and then more often than not forget the mobile version. And then you look at the mobile version and you know it's it's obvious that it doesn't convert because it doesn't look the part, it's not optimized for mobile. Um, and then a few simple tweaks usually solves that drop off. Yeah, I mean, it's like the biggest one thing is definitely your add to cart button. I think yeah. it's funny, you know, it's like when we, we have like our weekly calls in, in console X, it's like people come there and they kind of say the same problem. Like they have a client, yeah. they have a big problem and there's a huge drop off and we all say on the call, share your screen we we'll go to the website, we say, turn on your mobile view. Yeah, inspect and the tool and then. It's like there will be like almost 10, 11, 12 people screaming, look at your at the card button, because it's like hidden. You have to know. scroll three times and really find yeah. it. Yeah, we should get that printed on a t-shirt, man. <laughs> yeah, like where's your at, at the card, card button, bro? Button above the fold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah like above the fold. And, and make it green. Uh, it's always a discussion with, with yeah. my customers. Yeah. On, yeah, I want it black because it looks like black t looks like turned <coughs> off by uh, by human sense, uh, like default. Uh, it's not, not a good color to, to make it, uh, your traffic light is also green. So make it green. If you want people go through, make yeah. the most important buttons, make it green. Or what Amazon does is, ye is yellow, yellow, but yeah. green is even better, we see, for niche stores. And it's like, you, you don't need text. Like the things I hate the most is, if as a, as a consumer, I'm trying to buy something, if I go to a product page and you have the description open before I can click on add to cart. Like I do not care what the description says. 
Yeah. No one reads this. You always want to have this closed. I would even put it hidden below. Like the only thing you really want to show is photos of your item. Yeah. Name of the, the item. Yeah. Color swatches. Like what is the colors you offer? What sizes do you have? Add to cart. And then yeah. below it, you want to have clear, clear points. Like how much do they need to spend to get free shipping? Um, are there free returns? Uh, what kind of special thing is it? Yeah, about like this? the guarantee. Like guarantees. Like that. That's yeah. the only thing you want to make come across. Yeah, to make it visual. Uh, 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 load a bar or something in your cart drawer where you can see, okay, you need to spend exactly. 20 extra bucks for getting free shipping, for example. That makes it much more easier to understand and makes fast shopping, especially in fashion. You want uh, people order fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, make it easy. Yeah. And, and, and what is it? Or with the default team, you can really do that maybe you do some tweaks but don't offer complicated and don't make a christmas tree of your new of your new website what i mean is that you want a lot of features in it and, and so a lot of plugins just start with the basics and see yeah. if your product market fit and your offer is still working it doesn't matter if you have the best website or a little bit worse website <coughs> if your offer is not great people don't buy i had a customer he had a, an e-com store for porsche parts Porsche car parts. He was only one in Europe selling his parts. His website, his checkout never worked and he had over 100 orders a day because people want his products so they really want it. So they start calling them, they start emailing him to place an order. And after a four or five years, I was thinking, oh, maybe I need to make my process easier and fix my cart. And that was for me an eye opener. I said, okay, you don't have to have a nice or even a working website to have an e-com business. Yeah. Even without a working checkout, you can do sales if your product is, your offer is uh, more uh, amazing enough. Yeah. Yeah, true. I mean, it's like the, I'll be the first one to admit, like as an agency owner myself is a lot of marketers, they can all, you know, go and scream glory, like, look how great I am. Ultimately, we are just amplifying what's already there. Yeah. If you have product market fit, you have an awesome item, you have an amazing brand, all I'm just doing is getting it in front of more eyeballs. Yeah. I'm just amplifying your success. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of people forget. And it's kind of like what a lot of people always say, you know, like you can run ads on a broken item, it's not gonna scale. But if you have an amazing item with terrible ads, most likely you're still gonna make money yeah. because the item is just so great. That's it. it comes down to the offer first. And that's obviously what we discussed in the first episode as well. Mm-hmm. Right? Like you need to nail that offer. And then once you have a good offer, once you have that product market fit, everything else is you kind of follow suit yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah. and if you start developing an e-com site or start beginning Mm -hmm. one or transfer to shopify whatever you want want to try um keep it simple keep it simple for yourself a migration from one platform to the other is is always a headache and if you make it more complex for yourself it's only it takes longer so try to keep it as simple as possible and iterate along may make it better along but, but but don't start too complicated and yes, what I said, yes, try the default themes. Don't don't yeah. uh, spend too much money on on, on, on theme design. O- also, you maybe think, oh, it looks so nice, but it's all about the conversion. And exactly. it's so surprising for me that it's so much customers only looking through the design and don't care about conversions. I had a huge discussion with a customer. We want all buttons pink on our website. And we came from green, great conversions, but it must be pink. So we warned this customer, say, okay, please don't do it. But if it's, it's, it's your website, you pay us. If you want pink buttons, okay, we'd be fine. But you weren't. We make it pink, conversions drop by more than 60%. That's crazy. And it yeah, takes us insane. months to convince a co- uh, <laughs> customer that green was working better. Yeah. It's also listen to your web developer. If you hire some professional, listen to them because they mostly know what they are doing. Yeah. I like what you said about the three... F- the free theme though as well, because what people need to understand as well, the reason why that is a default theme on Shopify is because Shopify, when you get that free trial of Shopify, Shopify want you to stay on the platform. They want to keep you as a customer. So obviously they're going to give you a theme right off the bat that converts and gets sales. So there's no real need unless you are, unless you already have like certain best practices or you already have themes on file or you're ready to take that next step. If, if, if that is not all applicable, then there's no reason really why you should be, you know, hunting down different themes and like Corne said, you know, have this Christmas tree of a site with all these little features and gadgets and all little knickknacks, you know, just keep it stupidly simple and then focus on the offer. And then of course, focus on what I mentioned before is that conversion rate. Cause I like what you said there when about the, like sort of the best practices is having the product title, the image, and then the price, 
add to cart button, and then just having like the features like money back guarantee, etc. And then if you can still fit it in above the fold, have reviews or at least the amount exactly. of reviews and the stars have that between. I'd say, um, I'd, I'd, I'll probably say the below the image above the add to cart button somewhere there have the reviews, and that's all you need really. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's one thing. Um, it's maybe even more important than your design. It's website speed. It's loading speed. Uh, your ads won't yeah. uh, e your even Facebook won't <laughs> send you any traffic if you have the slowest website. Maybe you can turn on your ad. I don't know if you can uh, if it's. Uh, I'm not it will Facebook have a big expert. impact for sure. Your your CPC will uh, won't look nice. There's a thing that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. You have a terrible. Uh, and and if you have. Um, Add a lot of features to your website. It will always make it slower. Even Shopify is fast in the in, in in the beginning. It's fast, but if you add a lot of tools to it, if you oh uh, my competitor has this and my competitor has that, and I also install all the kind of apps. First, it, it will cost you a lot of money because you pay for most apps a monthly fee. Yeah. So it adds up every month, and it makes your website slower. So uh, people really like uh, fast, super fast websites. If you can load it b below two seconds, you get a lot more uh, uh, chance to get conversions. Yeah, and more a lot more conversions. The yeah, easy example is like if you're on if you're on Wi-Fi, the first like if my Wi-Fi is slow at home, first thing I do is I, s I switch over to 5G just because I'm so impatient, and like a large majority of people think the same way. So if your website does not open up right away or within at least the first two seconds, people, especially if they're not loyal to the brands. They're gonna just click back to whatever they were doing. Man, you know, speed equals Alice. They're gone, yeah, man. Exactly. <laughs> they're out here. Yeah, and the way what you said there as well with the Facebook ads, your cost per click will go up, your CPM will go up because Facebook works off of feedback loops. So if you're optimizing for a specific conversion, let's say you want more purchases for your store, and Facebook is sending traffic off of their platform onto your website, and they are not converting. When Facebook, because Facebook know everything, right? They have so much, so many data points on everyone. And they know people that are most likely to convert because they are, you know, put in a specific pool. So when you optimize for conversions, Facebook will then show your ads that's spe those specific people. If they are then not converting, Facebook are going to blame you or your website, and they're going to penalize you by increasing your cost per click and increasing your CPM, and then giving uh, someone else who has a better converting website uh, that has that positive feedback loop, they're going to give them, you know, the lower CPM. You say you want to help, like help these app platforms help you. You know, it's like a lot of people always put a blame to, you know, to the big tech companies. Yeah. But this kind of like as well is if you do not help them, why should they help you? So ultimately you're, of course, I get it, you know, you're paying for it, but it's kind of like they're sending people from their platform to your site. So if your site doesn't work and these people bounce, the first person they're going to blame is that ad company because that's where yeah. they're being sent from. Yeah. And there's one thing that they, these companies do not like at all and that's that being done to them. Yeah. yeah, so and it's, and it's the same for for your uh, organic reads, uh, yeah. also from yeah. even from social, but also from from Google. If your site is slow, Google won't rank you, um, and um, and you can see it in Google Page Speed, and we maybe can share a video about how that works. But it's it's so important to have the speed right. It's much much more important than your design. And that's uh, I, I, I always say it a dozen times to anyone, but. It's always uh, a hard discussion because people want the best design or want a, a, the a, a unique website, but it's sometimes better to just do what works and use a team what is proven uh, proven work yeah. than just try to create your own unique design with complex navigations. What people need to learn about how to use your website. And that's not your main goal to reinvent the usability tool. I mean, it's your main goal is to sell your product. Yeah, just don't re reinvent the wheel. Kind of with this as well. Like if you start out. Uh, I get it, everyone wants to have a unique site, you know, they want to mm -hmm. do this. And of course, I'm all for it. You know, you want to build your brand, you want to show it out there. But it's kind of like the, the logical step would kind of be is like, hey, this is my product. Who are the leaders in my market right now? We got company A and B. Yeah. Go to their Shopify site and I can guarantee you they're going to be identical. Because there's a reason why these two are at the top. Because they've done all this testing already before you. They know your client avatar. They know what colors they respond to. And you will see if you put these two sites next to each other, they're gonna be look very identical. Same yeah. sections, same titles, which kind of then tells you, okay, hey, maybe I should just kind of copy this and exactly. go there, you know? Because that's why, you know, the, the, the great uh, Virgil Abella always said, you know, great artists steal. Yeah. And there's a reason yeah. to it. Yeah. Yes, yes, and, 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 uh, and what's more important is your, is your content, right? It's, yeah, uh, true. You can, uh, I always said, if you, if you are, uh, for example, willing to spend five, maybe 10,000 US dollars for a, a website, I said, okay, maybe spend 3,000 for the website and save 7,000 for, for, for the content. 
And great images makes makes the end of your brand. Uh, just using stock photos is not making your brand or it's not, it's not growing your website. But, yeah. but use unique images, especially for fashion. If you can have your, um, the same model, for example, every time, but it, it, it gives more brand identity than just uh, white backgrounds. Yeah, couldn't agree more. So then if we look at the product page and we've now optimized that, so we're now getting the conversion from view content to add to cart, what would you say would be the next step? Like if someone adds to cart, is there, are there specific best practices that you would follow? I mean, I, would, I wouldn't say it's not like a, a no-brainer, but I would definitely uh, advise a cart slider. Yeah, I just, slide I just see it's like there's so many options you can do there. It's just a nice visual way that opens up on the right side. And at the top, you can very quickly add like how much more should I spend to get free shipping? Yeah. yeah it's like so visual, you cannot lose it. And then of course, to add on top of that, if they need to spend an extra 20, 30 bucks to add free shipping, boom, they upsell, will. frequently bought together three items. And this is all AI based. So you can just put this onto the date on your site. And this tool will know, hey, people who bought dress A, most likely also bought skirt B or bought hat C. And then by doing that, so they can very quickly add something to their cart to get yeah. to the free shipping threshold. Yeah, and I'll yeah. also yeah. appreciate AOV, which will make your return exactly. ad spend higher, will make it easier to run ads. Like you said at the start here, when you know, if the store doesn't convert or there's no product market fit, you know, we can run the best ads in the world, but it's not gonna work. It's much easier to work with businesses and work with brands that already have everything figured out, and then we just come in and, and augment what is already working, rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, and rather trying to, you know, trying to, figure out everything from the start. And that is obviously the reason why I think all three of us now no longer work with startup companies or companies without the product market fit. Exactly. Help winners win more. And it's kind of like, you know, it's, uh, it, of course, it's just, and it's annoying because there's a lot of people, most likely maybe also listen to this podcast, they just started with e-commerce, they just have a startup. And that's why we really keep hammering down product market fit. And yeah. how I would personally go about trying to find this is Quite often, people who start a business, they either make something that they can't find themselves in the market, mm -hmm. which is a great way to start. So that would mean for you, kind of from an organic perspective, maybe within your direct niche or direct, let's say, uh, communication sphere, find people who are similar to you. Like, do they also have this need? Yeah. Because if you're the only person with the need and you cannot find a direct other person with this need, I would personally kind of go back maybe to the drawing board because then maybe there is something very unique you have. You do yeah. want to have something that's available. It's like, I always kind of say, you know, you have this market and you can always sketch it in like, uh, like a pie. Let's say we're mm -hmm. all eating a wonderful pumpkin pie here with three slices. The easiest slice always to sell to is people already need it. Yeah. I always give yoga as an example. If I want to get fit, uh, I want to increase my flexibility and I decide I want yoga. These people are the easiest to sell to. Yeah. But they're already in the market for the service. You just have to show them the ad and convince them you're better than the other person. Here yeah. you can, you know, you can run your business all day long, but it's like only so big. So very quickly you get kind of to your second buy, which is just people who want to get fit, they want to get flexible, but they haven't decided yet they need yoga. So your ads change here, your website changes, because yeah. you need to convince them that you're the best person and they need yoga. Yeah. And then kind of where big scale happens, the biggest piece of the market, which you want to get to as quick as possible, because this is kind of where you, know, you get to the multi-millions in revenue, mm -hmm. is people who haven't decided they want to get fit, haven't decided they want to get flexible, and haven't decided they want to get yoga. So now you have four points you need to convince them on which makes it way harder. And that's where people kind of go wrong. They take the content from Pi 1, they take the website from Pi 1, and they go to Pi 3. Yeah. And it doesn't work, of course, because it's a completely different pain point, different scenario. Yeah, I like that. So basically the first pie is people that are problem aware and solution aware. The second pie is people that are problem aware but not solution aware. Yes. And then the third pie is people that are not problem aware nor solution aware. And like you said, there's a lot more convincing that needs to go into it in order to get someone from not even knowing they have a problem to knowing they have a problem and also having a you know, solution that they like and that they're ready to purchase. Yeah, and you, you need to go through these three charts. Like you will never start in, in by number three. No. You'll always start at one because that's where you find product market fit. And that's how you know you have product market fit because you can get people like this going to your business all the time. And I think once you have that going, I think that's the perfect way to get to that second, uh, second pie, so to say, where you really go after people who are maybe a little bit similar to you but you only have to convince them your item is it that fulfills our need. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, and 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 if that phase is ready, it's important to have build some trust with your website, and maybe we can talk. I mean, a you little need bit about to, that. for the third buy, you need trust. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of like in the first uh, parts, let's say of your sequence, is people are maybe happy to be a guinea pig, like mm -hmm. because you really. I think the perfect example is the iPhone. When it comes out, you got people sleeping in front of the store. Yeah. 
Like these people are more. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> and I'm always. It's in September mostly. The, the weather is still nice. That's, that's it's <laughs> like you know, if like at nine nine o'clock the the Apple show goes live, one minute past nine, either I call Crenay, Crenay calls me, Aaron. What's in your shopping bag? <laughs> you know, we already know. Okay, yeah, new iPhone, new MacBook. But it's it's kind of like you know. It's yeah, and, and we ordered at Apple because we know. Okay, they always ship, eh? and they yeah, know they go bank, bankrupt true. overnight. Uh, if everything goes, uh, so that's safe. And if you have a new store and you are need to build trust, it's important to add a few basic elements to your website. And what I mostly see is if the uh, the about page. It's I think it's really important to have, but yep. most. Uh, e-commerce owners only make create the about page when they build a new website and, nev and never look at it again. And if you look in your statistics, you will see that you have daily visitors on your about page. And what you can say that about that visitor is that they are a little bit hesitated to order from you. So they want first know more about your company before they are willing to order. And if you have a, a silly about page or not all not up to date information, it will cost you a lot of conversion. So spend a few hours it's not so hard to write an about page just about yourself about True. your company yeah and and keep it up to date add some pictures of your team maybe your building just a picture of your warehouse and don't be afraid that it needs to be professional pictures just create them with your iphone for example um, that will be fine but m build some trust there and of course reviews will add trust and eh? you can install a review uh, it's in default in shopify or it's a plugin but you, you can yeah, but really sure they offer a free plugin themselves yeah, free well. plugin to, to to create reviews super important and try to get some external reviews and yes the way to go at the moment i think is still on just uh, use google reviews it's free yeah. Of course, you can use paid services, but yes, why you should use something uh, paid if Google is, is really trustworthy? So I think you can use uh, Google products and uh, shop reviews for your shop. Yeah, and yeah. Don't, of course, don't be afraid as well to show your face, like show who you are, show who is behind the brand. Like there's a reason why if I speak of Tesla, we all know Elon Musk. If yeah. I speak of Pe people Facebook, buy from people, eh? yeah, people exactly. brands, yeah. Yeah. you don't buy for a brand, you know, and it's and it's like, of course, I'm now giving examples of big tech companies, but if you look at just the e-com niche as well, like we have Kylie Jenner, Kylie Jenner Cosmetics, we have Gymshark, Ben Francis, everyone knows these people and there's yeah. a reason for it, you know? So it's kind of like I said, don't be afraid of showing your face, like show who you are. Yeah. And of course, people kind of then give the counter argument, yeah, but I'm not, I don't have a lot of followers. You don't need it. You know, people no. just want to kind of see who is behind this and they can quite often then buy into that. Yeah, people want to see yeah. the journey as well. And I think that is the reason why Alphalete became as big as it was, is because on a daily basis, you know, Christian Guzman was documenting the journey and also showing how he was growing Alpha Lead. So people already had that trust because they can see how hard he's working behind the scenes. Like obviously, um, you know, that is, a, you already had a big influence and a big brand. Um, so that, you know, obviously skews sort of his data in, in, in a way. But if you just start out and document the journey, then people will naturally be interested in what you're doing and you know what you have to sell. And more often than that, they'll probably just end up purchasing your products because they trust you or they believe in you and your vision and your brand. Um, and it's also quite funny that nowadays, when I go on YouTube, more often than not, I'll actually be more interested in the smaller channels because I feel like now they are more realistic and more raw and I feel I can get more value, but also more benefit from watching that content rather than something that is super high quality, super high production, uh, because I know that you know they've, they've already hit that point where they you know where they want to be. Whereas the come up for me is much more interesting and much more um, like you know much more enjoyable to watch, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. And it's just a great I think avenue that of course YouTube has created for us that it, it allows people to put that content out there. Because I mean, yeah. it's like. Uh, if I just look, you know, across because well, all three of us ha have our own channel as well. So it's like at a certain point we did decide, hey, this is something we potentially want to explore. So yep. We do want to have, whether, whether it be information or you want to show something and you just want to put it out there because you kind of can help people. Yeah, 100%. Well, the large majority of sales for both More Life Garments as well as, you know, the coaching programs, they've come through our personal brands. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we had that discussion on the very first mastermind. Like how does everyone know each other? Every single person there followed either of us on Instagram first, then found our YouTube channels, and only then that actually decided to invest into our programs. So, you know, having that brand alongside it, having that personality of yourself, or, you know, just showing your face, definitely has its benefits. Yeah, and, it's like, and then their numbers don't matter. It's like, 
I, uh, like if I, for example, look at my own YouTube, it's like it has, I don't know, not even a thousand subscribers, but I know every single person that subscribed to that YouTube is exactly someone I want to speak to when it exactly. comes to where my, the information I have. Yeah. So it's kind of like if you have a core group who you can speak to directly is way more valuable than having like 100,000 people who don't really care. Yeah. And I think that's why you kind of had like two, three years ago, kind of that, that, uh, that tight switching within this like influencer market where you saw a lot of big influencers with millions of followers, but they cannot move a single product because it's like a group of this, a group of that. It's like a complete mix. So it's just not interesting yeah, for a business or a brand to buy into because there's yeah. nothing there for them. Yes, yes, and, and if you want to like create some content, but what, what, what a lot of questions I get, okay, but what do I need to put on my page? What do you need to put on my socials? But just take your customer behind the scenes. Uh, it's uh, yeah. uh, uh, Gary, Fa uh, Gary Vaynerchuk said, I'll say, uh, don't create, just document. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's, so it's more easy to do. Um, but it's also, it makes your, it gives your, your brand more trustworthy. If you just put on some videos on your socials or whatever, or some pictures, what, what are you doing? Also, if you're working on a new website, show your customers that you're working on a new one. Ju don't just launch the new website. Just show them that you're working on a new website because also the, if you change your website overnight and your uh, uh, fast customer don't, they, they see oh, a complete new website, they maybe don't think, oh, is it still the legit website it was before? So if you, have social proof on social media from weeks before that you, you show, okay, we are building on our new website. It takes maybe a few months or a few weeks before it's online. You also get great feedback from your customers. That what yeah. I see, when customers of me are, are launching, uh, pre-launch their new website, they get a lot of feedback from customers. Oh, but maybe you can change this or that. And you get a lot of new insights. It's also free usability tests you do with yeah. just um, do it together with your customer. Show, show them what, what are you doing. Yeah, if I look at my YouTube channel now, uh, my most viewed video is still a day in the life, which I remember shooting it because I was planning a road trip to the US and I sort of had like this calendar ready with YouTube content that I wanted to shoot prior to going to the US so that when I was there, I didn't have to stress out about YouTube videos because I already have all these videos like pre-scheduled. And there was one video that I really did not want to do just because I just I lost heart in the topic. I can't even remember what the topic was. So rather than shooting that specific video, I just shot a day in the life because I had meetings that day. I thought, you know what? Let me just record sort of small little snippets of me, you know, in the meetings, out the meetings, what I'm doing in between the meetings, uh, you know, looking at the ads manager, etc. Like really like low value, um, at least you know low uh, intensity content for me to record because I'm just literally documenting what I'm doing. Um, there's no, in my opinion, there was no value in it, but that is still my most viewed video. I think it's already got like 40,000 views or something like that. And cool. people actually say that that is one of the most viable videos because they got raw footage of what it's like to run an agency behind the scenes. And then another example is uh, More Life Garments. The first time I launched the, the Unemployable Hoodie, I brought everyone along with me sort of behind the scenes. So I was showing people the mock-ups. I was showing people the samples, even the samples that went wrong. Um, I ordered a couple of samples where the quality just was not up to scratch. Um, I show people like the, the, you know, like the drawings of what the hoodie looks like, etc. And that first launch, I think I got like 10 sales within the first hour of launching that site. Whereas the second launch, the Circle of Winners collection, I didn't take anyone behind the scenes because I thought, well, I've already got this customer base. I don't necessarily need to be promoting this on my socials as much as the first time. So all I did was I sent out an email blast and I only got a couple of sales off that, off that second launch uh, when, when I launched it compared to the first one where everyone was really up for it. Everyone was waiting for me to, to drop the, those hoodies. Um, and just, just the only difference between those two launches was one was documenting behind the scenes and showing, uh, you know, people insights um, and, you know, like Kone said, you know, offering them the opportunity to give feedback as well. And the second launch, I didn't do any of that. And, you know, the, the differences in sales was night and day. Yeah, and, and the storytelling, that helps. People like to see, uh, you just, just do a sales pitch. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is not, not working. But if you are making more sort of storytelling at your personal story behind your offer, why you're doing it, it, it will also help. And it also uh, same for, for your e-com store. Um, yes, introduce yourself. And that works so much better. Yeah, I think storytelling is important. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, I call it, it's the, what always works the best when it comes to YouTube is, ultimately it's the, the, the get rich quick swim. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like if you look at what are the, the videos with the most views, it's like a, a billionaire morning routine, billionaire breakfast guides, you know? It's kind of like what just ultimately nowadays people click into. So if you know this information is out there, um, you can of course kind of put your own twist to it. 
because I think Skyward Sword as well, which are day in the life doing the best. It's kind of like when if I sometimes look at look at my DMs, I get like people asking me, hey Aaron, what, what do you do for breakfast? Yeah. Do you do intermittent fasting? And when I read this, I'm like, why is that like why is that relevant? You, yeah, yeah. You, you don't know me. You kind of maybe saw a YouTube video and then you sent me a message, asked me the question. It's like why does that matter? So it yeah. seems like that's kind of what then goes through people people's head or so they think that, that maybe impacts it. Maybe that's why, for example, 75 heart, the the, the training routine, if like yeah. you call it, why it becomes so popular. So I think maybe then people think that gets them to go somewhere. Yeah. And again, of course, it's a mindset thing, but it's like you, of course, can play into this. Ultimately, you know, we all know the American dream. Everyone loves a success story. I mean, Hollywood is created on it. So you can tap into this. Yeah, it's funny because also, I think that's why our seven figure mastermind did as well as it did, is because people just wanted an insight into who we are, you know, exactly. outside of sort of the agency or, or, you know, who's the guy behind the camera? Because obviously they only see our heads on Zoom and on YouTube and stuff. Um, but then what do we do outside of that? Like, are we the same person? Are we, do we have the same personality as we do online? What do we do on a regular basis? How often are we, you know, working on our laptops and so on and so forth? And I think um, at least, you know, if I listen to the feedback from the, the especially the first mastermind, is that people were just n- generally curious in, what our day to day is like, and obviously, you know, we can't really show that on a mastermind, but they can ask us. They can say, okay, you know, what time do you get up? What time do you start work? What time do you end work? How many hours do you spend behind the laptop each and every day? You know, stuff like that is interesting for people because I think they want to know what's behind the curtain. Yeah, they, they want to try to, to to model you, and that's also my advice if you yeah. want want to emulate. Uh, yes, um, yeah, of course, emulate. It. Yes, and, and 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 that will work. But if you show it, that makes it uh, even more powerful. Yeah, especially for an e-com store. I think if you start an e-com store today, uh, video will be king, and uh, content will al- is always be king. And it's so important to share your background story, share behind the scenes, how is your logistics working, all the things. People are are, are are really like to see how the package is going from your warehouse shelf to 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 the post office, for example. People like to see that. They, they like to be entertained. And that's may- maybe nothing to do with your offer, but you're w- building a brand if you do a sh- share your background. Yeah. I like the way we're talking about like keeping things raw and natural after dropping like 4K on this podcast setup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know. I, I think always with stuff like this, when it comes to, uh, to to gear, if you like to call it, it's ultimately you need to do what motivates you. It's like, I'm always for it. You know, you technically, uh, you of course, we, we only live once. If you want to get to the gym and by you buying that new pair of trainers, it gets you going. By all means, by the I'm the same. Yeah. I'm the exact same. Yeah, so yeah. sure. Yeah. It's something with like, you know, hey, we got together, we want to do a podcast, and I'm 100% the guy, okay, let's definitely get the best stuff that's out there. Yeah. Because it commits me to really get to it. It's skin in the game. Exactly. You get skin in the game, and you really know what you're doing. Yeah. We yeah. could and record this on our phones, and then I 100% guarantee there will not be a second podcast. No, exactly. You know, it's like you, you have to make that commitment for yourself, uh, you know, and whatever you do in life, I think you should do it in every angle. It's also a little bit of present. Uh, I, I, I like for myself, if I look to myself, I always like to uh, make monthly, weekly goals for myself. And sometimes I say, oh, if I hit this goal, I buy myself a new pair of airports, airports for example. Or yeah. I buy this new roadcaster thing because we want to uh, do a podcast because yeah. we like it to have uh, the, the greatest, latest hardware, uh, Aaron. And <laughs> yeah. we, we like <laughs> that. To have I some cannot lie. <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah, and I think, okay. And it's also a sort of present if you are, entrepreneur you have a lot of things to do and you need, need to reward yourself of course you get your salary yeah, you, you you make your money but also it's i think it's super important to make some uh, recurring rewards for yourself if you hit your personal goals to um, maybe buy an apple watch buy a new phone uh, or, or, or or on holiday but um, doing a holiday is sometimes more um, more difficult because yes you're starting off a business so it's you don't have time to go on holiday but just buy something what you like it can be a new pair of shoes, some hardware, whatever. Yeah, you definitely, it's like, you need something beside. It's like, uh, when people always like ask me, it's like, how, how can you stay committed? And it's like, it's, it's to a certain extent hard to say, because like, I've never really been the person who like really needs a break or something, because I and generally enjoy them doing. Because yeah. I know it's like, when we, for example, we're on the, uh, the mastermind, like at the conversation with Corneille as well, it's like, I can have dinner, and right now I can have a pop-up, I have a meeting one minute, like I can legit walk there, open it up, and within a second, like I'll, I'll be on the spot yeah. to, to do what I need to do. And maybe that's like, maybe it's a blessing or a skill I just have, but if you do not have this, definitely find something. Yeah. Like I know for myself, I need to at least like once a week play some golf, just a little, let some steam off. Yeah. Like there's something I can do for myself and I would 
from the beginning have something that allows you to take your mind kind of out of it. Yeah. And that's also like uh, what we discussed earlier is if you, for example, start a business but you still live at home, make sure, like, please make sure your office is not the same as your bedroom. Because yeah. otherwise there will be no barrier for you. Like you need to have a separate room where you work compared to where you sleep. Yeah, yeah or, or hire a co-working space or go to exactly. Starbucks or whatever and start working there. Um, but, but yes, but uh, also reward yourself with things and also make it more comfortable. And, and that's really important what you say, Aaron. Uh, uh, try to um, separate private and, and work. It's better for yourself, better for your family. And, 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 and also, of course, it's important to work hard and make a lot of hours, but also do, do something for yourself and for your family is super important. Yeah, I think that's probably how we can end this podcast. I think there's a lot of valuable things we say here. But uh, yeah, I would yeah, everyone sure. who listens to this, like put, put a goal there right now, something you, you're going to achieve at the end of the week. Like and that. once you achieve and got that goal, you go uh, go out and get that thing you want to get yourself and tag us. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, 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 make, and, and, and if you yeah. listen to this podcast, make a screenshot on your phone and, 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 and tag us and maybe ask your question and share your goals with us. Maybe we can invite someone to the show. And, uh, exactly. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Cool. Thanks for listening, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.